Hello to you guys. Hello, hello, and welcome to another exciting edition of 10 for Life. My name is Sibusiso, and as always, I'm very excited, guys, to officially open another new week of Tenfold Education shows that are proudly brought to you with lots of love by Liberty. A very special shout out goes out to Liberty for giving us a chance to share all this awesome knowledge that we have with you guys. And if you haven't, remember to also download our Tenfold Education app. It's an awesome, awesome app that helps you to cover the basics that you're probably having problems with on any of the topics that you are concentrating on. Remember on today's program, like we've been doing recently, we are focusing on revision. We understand that you guys, your exams are very close, so this show is specifically going to be focusing on revision. So any and every question on, in math that is giving you a problem, whether it's in paper one or paper two, we're just right here to try and help you guys understand how do you work with those uh, questions. I've noticed that our show is starting to gain popularity. There's a lot of people that keep on saying thank you guys for all that you're doing. So I want to encourage you right now as a person who's watching to please go to your socials, update in your status, let people know that Tenfold Life is up and running and they are missing on the opportunity to multiply their content coverage tenfold and beyond. We want as many of you guys to watch the program and benefit from what we're doing here. We're helping with revision. So without any further waste of time, let's just get into this and have fun. There's a lot of very awesome questions that you sent to us on all possible exciting topics. And I'm very excited to start working with those things with you guys. So the first question that we're gonna be looking at comes straight from trigonometry. Let's go and check out what the question is all about. All right. So this is a nice question that comes from the section of uh, trigonometry. If you look at it, you will notice that this is the part that specifically focuses on solutions of triangles. Remember, you started solving triangles a long, long time ago. And when you were in grade 10, or even grades before grade 10, you were very good at working with triangles that are right-angled triangles, okay? And we all know that in a right-angled triangle, which is what I call a right, right? You can use the theorem of Pythagoras to find the relationship between the sides. However, if you want to relate angles, for example, with the sides where maybe this could be Y, and this could be X, and that could be R, then we're going to use the popular Sokatoa, which means what? Which means the sine of that particular angle you're looking at will be the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. The cosine will be the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. And the tangent will be the opposite over the adjacent. So Sokatoa works a lot and it's very useful if you're dealing with a triangle that happens to be a right or a right angled triangle. However, as you grow older, you realize that some questions involve triangles that are not right angled triangles. And if you get a random triangle appearing somewhere, this is where you're gonna now need to use your knowledge of what we call the cosine rule, the error rule, or the sine rule. Where we normally give you, uh, maybe let's just say this is triangle ABC, we then encourage you to label the sides. The side opposite to angle A is small a, the side opposite angle B is small b, and the side that is opposite angle C will then become small c. Then there's a relationship between those sides and those angles, and the information sheet does have the formulas for the sine rule, for the area rule, and for the cosine rule, right? To then be up to you to decide which rule will help you to figure out the solution in any question that you're working with. All right. Now, before we even begin solving this beautiful question that you guys sent to us, you need to understand something. You can never do anything on a triangle if that triangle has doesn't have a minimum of at least three things. For you to be able to do anything on a triangle, that triangle must have three things that you're already given. If it has less than three things, there's nothing you're going to do on it, right? So when you're dealing with these questions, normally you are dealing with different planes, right? There is the horizontal plane, which is where we're walking, right? And then there is the vertical plane, which is where Spider-Man walks, right? Those are not the same planes. So when you're looking at your diagrams, be careful of that, right? There are angles that are in the horizontal plane, there are angles that are in the vertical. The vertical plane has its own information, the horizontal plane also has its own information. So be careful as you're working through that. So normally, you'll find that in these kinds of questions, there will be a triangle that has got enough information, but examiners are interested in asking you things that are in the other triangles that do not have enough information. And what is enough again? Three things. So what would then happen is we want you to use a triangle that has got enough info 
and work out the common site so that you can then take information from the triangle that is enough and transfer that to the triangle that does not have enough. So you're trying to enrich the other triangle. What am I talking about? Let's check this out. So if you look at my drawing here, right, before we even look at the love letter, I'm just trying to get you to understand how these questions, because they are all the same, they don't change. The idea is the same. The questions are gonna change, but the ideas are always the same. Now, if you look here, there's about three triangles that we can see that are clear, okay? There's a right-angled triangle HLB, which we are looking at. Now, that triangle there is the nicer triangle. Why am I saying this is the nicer triangle? Well, it does have a minimum of three things. What are those three things? We've got this three meters here, we've got the 40 degrees there, and we also have the 90 degree angle there. So that is the triangle that we're certainly going to begin from. And then if you look there, there's another triangle, ALB, the one with a lot of dots on it, that one on the, on the horizontal plane. That triangle does not have enough information. In fact, it only has two things on it. It has the angle 113 degrees, and it has the length AL of 5.2 meters. So I'm thinking, one way or the other, this question is gonna ask us to try and figure out what the length of the common side is. Because once we know that, then that means we have succeeded to enrich the triangle ALB. Uh, Very powerful. Okay, cool, so now let's start. The love letter, which is what you always have to go through, reads as follows, it says, a, B, and L are points in the same horizontal plane, right? What do we mean by the horizontal plane? We mean this plane. This is the horizontal plane where we're walking, all right? And then the statement proceeds and says to us that HL is a vertical pole of length 3 meters, okay? AL equals 5.2 meters. The angle ALB is equal to 113 degrees and the angle of elevation, okay? Angle of elevation of H from B is 40 degrees, okay? Now, some of you guys get confused by the stories between elevation and depression. Let's just quickly make an example. Let's just say this is patience, okay? Patience standing here, and then this is like a lovely tree somewhere there, which looks better than the one that I just drew now, okay? So if there's a bed somewhere here, let's just say there's gonna be a bed that is somewhere here, right, the bed. If patience is looking at the bed, that angle that we're going to actually use in the context of patience will be known as the angle of elevation, right? To elevate is to go up. But in the context of the bed, the bed looking down, right? If the bed is looking at patience, then that angle will be known as the angle of depression. It's normally here, right? That angle there will be the angle that we call the angle of depression, the angle that you are looking at when you're looking down. So please don't confuse the two, right? To elevate, it means elevation is when you're looking up, but depression is when you are looking down. So that would be the angle of depression, but in this case, we're given the angle of elevation, which means that's the angle when we are looking up, elevate up to go up, right? Okay, now um, let's go to the questions. We now are going to start working with the solutions of whatever the problems that these people want us to look at. So 7.1 is asking us to calculate the length of LB, right? We wanna figure out the length of LB. Now, if the diagram looks too much for you, right? If it looks too much for you, I'm encouraging you to isolate the triangle that has got the length LB that you're looking for, right? So what I'm going to do now is I'm gonna just draw the triangle on its own. It looks like this. This is basically what is in that triangle. There is three meters here. There is 40 degrees here and we are looking for LB, right? This is what we are basically looking for. Now, and then because it's a right angle triangle, you can use the sine rule and the cosine rule, but I find that is actually unnecessary. Why? Because you're looking at the right. Okay, so in a right, I know that we're going to definitely use so couture, right? So now, what I always ask myself is one thing, right? I'm looking for the trig ratio, that will help me, remember we are looking for LB. So I want the trig ratio that will help me marry this 3M with the unknown side. In the context of 40, that will be the opposite side and LB will definitely be the adjacent side. So which trig ratio will marry opposite and adjacent? That is definitely going to be tan. So my solution will just say the tan of 40 degrees is the opposite side, which is three, divided by the adjacent side, which is your LB. Basic mathematics, 
when you put this over 1 and you cross multiply, you end up with LB multiplied by the tangent of 40 degrees is 1 times 3, which gives you 3. You then need to divide on both sides by that tan 40. So your LB comes back as 3 divided by the tangent of 40 degrees. No one said anything about how we need to express the answer. I'm going to just try and call my calculator to assist me to figure out what exactly is the ratio of 3 uh, over the tan of something. What is something? Something is 40. Then I'm going to get an answer here of 3.58. So my answer is going to be 3.58 meters when I take it to two decimal places. Beautiful stuff. Right. Now, if I feel like I might need this answer later, my advice to you is store it somewhere. All right. I might store this in any of the letters A, B, up to M. There's X, there's Y, there's M. There's a lot of storage compartment you can use. So if you're using this calculator, you want to store numbers, there's an STO button. You just push it, and then you select any letter you like. So I'm going to press that A, right? So my answer has now been stored in A. If I need it in future, I can just call it back, right? Let's move on to the second part of the question. The second part of the question is 7.2. They're saying to us, hence or otherwise, calculate the length of AB, all right? Where is this AB? Well, AB is uh, the side of this triangle ALB. So we're basically focusing on the triangle that happens to be on the horizontal plane. So we are interested in knowing how long is the distance between A and B. Like I said, isolate this. If you feel like the drawing is too much, Isolate the diagram, put it on its own. We've got 5.2 and 130 in there. So when I'm answering my 7.2, I encourage you to isolate the triangle if you feel like it's too much going on there. Put it on its own. We've got A here. We've got B there. We've got 113 here. Um, this is L. We just found the length of LB. We know that that is basically 3.58 meters. And there's AL, right, which was given to us. There is a length on the drawing that tells us that the length of AL is 5.2. So AL is 5.2. So I'm going to put this 5.2 meters here, right? So now what's going on here? What are we interested in? Well, we are interested in figuring out what is the length of AB. So then you have to ask yourself a simple question. Do I have three things there? Yes, we have three things. We've got two sides and the included angle. And you guys should know by now. You should know that if you've got two sides and the included angle, if you've got the included Again, right? You're going to use the cosine rule to figure out the third side. Very, very important. If you've got the included angle, then you're looking at using the cosine rule. What is the meaning of included? Included means it's between the sides. It's the angle between those two sides. There's a side that you know, there's a side that you know, there's an angle between them. That's the included angle. If you've got that, then you can use the cosine rule to work out the third side. The cosine rule is the only rule that works with all the sides of the triangle. So please be careful of that. All right. So because I want to work with all the sides of the triangle, this looks like something that we can work with. All right. Now let me label my sides. I'm going to label my sides opposite L. That's going to be small L. Opposite angle A. That will be small A. Opposite angle B. That will be small B. You're not obliged to use uh, my the L, the B, and the A. All right. You could still use the formula as it appears in the information sheet. It will still work out perfectly. All right. I'm looking for what? Small l. So my formula will say l squared equals to a squared plus b squared minus 2 ab cos of angle l. The trick here is this always needs to look like that, right? The site that you're looking for needs to look exactly like the angle that you're actually working with, right? So what is a l? Well, a a l is basically the length we're looking for. So let's through the substitution here for what we actually uh, know so far. Our small a is 3.58 squared. Our small b is 5.2 squared minus 2 times 3.58 times 5.2 times the cosine of 113 degrees. Then you just type all this in your calculator. I'm going to be very smart about it. I already have small a stored somewhere. So I'm going to be very sneaky about this, right? Let's go, let's go. So a uh, small a in my calculator is stored inside a. So I can literally go alphabet a, all right? This is my substitution, squared, okay? Plus uh, the other one, I don't have it stored anywhere. So I'm going to have to type 5.2, close bracket. There's a square there. We need to minus. Two is a number. 
What is A? A is A. I stored my number inside alphabet A so I can afford to call it the way I am doing now. And then the other value is 5.2. Close the bracket there and then you've got to press the cosine of something which is 113 in this case. If you press the equality sign you get 54.35. So I'm sitting now with 54.35 blah 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 but remember we're not looking for l squared we're looking for just the length of ab which is just one small l therefore we can conclude that ab will definitely have to be the square root of that because if l squared is what you're looking at for you to get the answer you need to work out the square root on both sides so whatever i'm looking at is not the answer but now take the square root of what i'm looking at alphabet answer then the final thing i'm getting here is 7.37 uh, okay 7.37 meters becomes the length of my al absolutely beautiful no complications the last question let's see the last question they're asking us to find the area of triangle abl all right triangle abl is a triangle in the horizontal plane okay cool now in case if you didn't know i hope you guys by now uh, will actually get it from this 7.3 we're looking for the area of a triangle. What triangle is that? It's this triangle again, okay? We know 113 degrees here. Um, we know this is 5.2, and we know that this is actually 3.58, okay? So we've got all that. We're looking for the area of this. The formula for the area says area is half AB sine C, from what you guys know, in the information sheet. In the context of what you're looking at, remember this is small a, and this is small b, and this is angle L, right? So that means my area in this context, which is the area of this triangle A, L, B, because there's an A here and there's a B here, will definitely be half small a, small b, sine of angle L. Okay, okay, cool. It also works with two sides and the included angle, the same as the cosine rule. So half is a number. What is small a? Small a is 3.58. And then small b is 5.2. We are looking for the signs. Sign of what? The sign of 113 degrees. You just go straight to your calculator. You push it there. You'll find something awesome. Let's see what is awesome. In this context, I'm looking for a half. There's a half. Awesome stuff, right? What is small a? Again, I still have it. I'm going to just say alphabet a. I'm calling it. I have it stored in my calculator. All right, times 5.2, and then close bracket, then you press the sign of something. What is something? Something is 113, and then you just press your equality sign, bingo. What do you end up with? It's 8.56. So 8.56 squared meters. This was just about meters, so definitely the area will be squared meters. Awesome question, a good revision for us to work on trigonometry, particularly 2D and 3D triangles. When you're working with 2Ds and 3Ds, you have to always, always remember you start with a triangle that has a minimum of three things. You use it to figure out the common site. Why? You want to transfer information from the first triangle into the other triangle, and then you can be able to proceed and find the solutions if you do that. Absolutely awesome. Thank you very much for sending us that question.